Well, hello, my friends in grade four and five, all the students who are spending time to learn about the North American continent. I went on to my resources on the computer and I was able to print out an outline of the continent. This is what I gave you a smaller one to make a map for our books. Here's a bigger one, slightly bigger, printed out so that I can use it to put together my salt dough three-dimensional continent. So I'm going to rather quickly cut this out. I'm reminding you about the regions that we're studying. We're not going to do a super amazing job of cutting out these um, this little model. As a matter of fact, we're going to leave the Caribbean islands in and we're going to come around here and we will clip the Gulf of Mexico, but we're going to leave something there for the Caribbean islands so we can see them on our map. So you can just leave a little space, kind of like this so far. So you leave a little piece, a little dangling participle there to hold on to the islands. I don't know what dangling participles are yet, but we will. Perhaps one day. That's kind of a dangling participle. Something you say at the end of a sentence to kind of leave the person like, oh, what's going on? Okay. All right, so I'm cutting this out now, and I'm leaving a little bit of an edge. And I've got my baking pan here, and I'm hoping that you will have had a chance now to look at the video of how to make the salt dough. It's very easy. One cup of salt, one cup of flour, uh, and pretty simple uh, to make. And you mix that together with about a half a cup of water. And then your salt dough you can knead until it's nice and pliable. And it's got a really nice feeling to it, actually. Uh, it's fun to play with. And if you let it dry out on your hands, it is a little bit salty, that's true. Try not to lick your fingers because it's very salty. Also not very hygienic. Okay, so we come here and cutting out the Great Lakes. <clears throat> Certainly the land is not made this way, but we're doing it. It was made much more slowly over millions and millions of years. Um, and that was the ocean. Rises and falls with the ice ages. More land is exposed during an, an ice age because all the water gets turned into ice on the top and bottom of the earth, and this takes the water away. And then the land, <clears throat> the beach goes just out and out and out, and you've got a lot more land. And then when the ice age melts like we're doing now, we're in a melting time, then the ocean fills up, and... The water rises and the new land goes away. Uh, and so this has come and gone for millions of years. And we don't live long enough to see in beginning of an ice age in the end, but we can study it from the history that we find in the stories of the land, which is what basically uh, geology means, is the story of the earth, the story and the study, and it tells us. You can tell by the rocks and where they are and where their cousins are. Like we talked about how the western part of South America fits really neatly into the, um, sorry, the eastern part of South America fits neatly into the western part of Africa. They fit together there like a glove. So now I have my little map. It's pretty well cut out. And the thing I'm going to do, I'm going to lay it on here. I could tape it on, but I'm going to bake it, so I don't really want to tape it. And I have my salt dough ball here. It's pretty cold. I put it in the fridge, but it's still really, really fresh. And so I'm going to see if I can figure out a way so you can watch me making my little map here. Let's see. If I use my coffee cup here, hopefully you can see that. So there's the paper. I'll put it over a little so you can see better. And here's my salt dough. So 
I'm going to take some small pieces off and I'm going to flatten them down into a pancake and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to tear that up into some smaller pieces and then I'm going to fit it on here. So where it goes in there, I'm going to fit it and I'm going to press down on it. And then I'm going to put another piece over here so that I can fit it on here and press down here. So I'm going to make a little flat surface here. You can do that too. I'm going to put that little piece that sticks out here, this little, maybe you could call that an isthmus. It's a little bigger than it looks. On this map it looks little, but it's actually a pretty good place. I've been there and it's bigger than you think. So we make our continent look really small here, but it's huge. It's the third largest continent. So, okay, so I'm making a nice flat bed over this uh, little map here, you can see. And I'm going to fill in the different pieces by pressing and tapping. And I'm using my finger to shape it. And the paper will probably end up sticking to the back. It'll adhere to the back, and that'll be fine. Because I'm going to paint it, and I don't care if the paper is on the back. If there's any left sticking out, I think I'll just trim it off with scissors after it bakes. It might shrink a little while it bakes. That happens, so don't be afraid to be slightly more generous around the edges. Okay, so I'm, I'm making my way here across the Canadian shield here, the flat, rocky lands way up there. It's very cold, and the ground is frozen most of the year. I'm kind of coming around the bottom of the... Great Lakes here. It's very cold. This is the area where Michigan is there. It's so cold. Yeah. It's, it's nothing like we have here in Oregon. It's shockingly cold and snowy a lot of the year there. That's to be expected. So far, so much more far north than where we are here. Okay, so I'm getting here and on the St. Lawrence River and I am making this nice flat little map and I'm going to do uh, Greenland which again is a very very large island uh, not its own continent but part of our continent but sticking out there in the huge area and again the funny thing about it is they call it Greenland but it's actually covered with ice. And it's Iceland, where they can grow crops and things. Even have little Arctic foxes running around. Okay, now I'm coming up here to the part of Canada that joins on with Alaska, which is oddly part of the United States, even though it's all the way up here. But that's true. It was part of a land purchase, and I don't know why Canada didn't try to get it or keep it, but I'm sure they had some good reasons. And we're going to be studying those as we go along. I'm going to make a little land bridge here, although there actually is a little channel there. And I don't know if you can see where I'm working, but maybe you can. I'm going to do this little part of Alaska that sticks out. Oops. The camera's falling over. Are you being good? Okay, you have to be good. The kids want to see. Okay, so I've got my Alaska part here and the little tiny arm of land that is thought to be that part of that land bridge that where the people walked from Asia and <clears throat> across and came in and spread down through the continent. Although again, I have certainly heard and read that they also were able to just hop on a boat over there in Polynesia and if they had enough supplies, they would end up on the western coast of South America and they could get off the boat and there they were. Didn't have to have a sail. Just count on the ocean tides. A rather famous man did that. Thor Heyerdahl. He wrote this wonderful book called Kontiki. And he went down. He was a Norwegian. And he went down to that area in Polynesia. And made it such a boat. And got on it. And brought all kinds of things on board. And he managed to land on the west coast of South America. Alive. So... Let's take a look now. Let's see. Can you see? 
Why is my hand all there? Where is the camera? I never quite know where the camera is. Okay, there's my map so far. You can kind of see it. So it looks uh, very strange from this angle, but that's the way it looks. It's hard to see. Maybe it would help if I push this button. Let's see if I can do it. No, I can't. Okay. <coughs> we'll put you back over here. Okay, so there's our there's our map so far. Maybe I'll just hold it with my one hand here. There's our map, and now we're going to put <coughs> the mountain ranges on. So we can take some more of this salt dough, and we can run the Rockies down on this side. And we can make a long line of those mountains on this side, make them nice and big so we can see them. We can do that all the way down the to the western region here and up into Alaska. And we can run them all the way down into Central America, Mexico here. That's a big, giant continental divide. That's a landmass that's pushing up. Next week, we're going to be doing an experiment with that. And then <coughs> on the eastern side over here, a little bit smaller and softer, we've got the Appalachians. Very old mountain chain here. Those are the largest mountains in North America the tallest and the most obvious, and people love to hike and recreate and lots of snow. And again, the great mountain range here catches all the ocean breezes full of water lifting off the Pacific Ocean, and then beyond this here is dry and the plains and the deserts, the high desert. Down here we've got the Caribbean, and we have a pretty good map here. I'm going to do a little bit more work on it, and then I'm going to go ahead and bake it in the oven overnight. And then coming up this next week, uh, we will try to paint it and see how it comes out. And then we can show each other. Make sure your uh, piece is not stuck to the baking sheet. Make sure you lift it up. You might want to put it on some foil because you don't want it to stick to the baking pan and you can't get it off, you'll have to break it. But look how much salt dough I have left over. So this is a lot of fun to roll out with a rolling pin and then you can use cookie cutters to make kind of cool ornaments and you can paint them or you can make all kinds of stuff. You can make little animals. Keep it fairly flat because it's not, doesn't like to be together like this. It likes to be a little smaller and a little flatter in order to dry. So this is the second part of our video of our little North American continent. And after I bake this, I'll be making a third one to show you how we're going to paint this. And I'm going to mark in the rivers like I showed you before. And now it's all lovely and it looks good and it's ready to bake. So hope you had fun. I hope you give this a try. It's very easy to make. And again, you probably need about one quarter of that, but still... Now you have something to make other things with. Okay, bye-bye. See you soon.